You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We're here once again. Today, we have a true honor. We're going to be talking to Brett Baer. He's the chief political anchor of Fox News Channel and also the anchor executive editor of Special Report with Brett Bear. He has an amazing new book, To Rescue the Republic, Ulysses S. Grant, a.k.a. Hiram, if y'all know that, and the Fragile Union in the Crisis of 1876. True honor talking to you, Brett. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Talk a little bit about Ulysses' father, how he wanted him to go to West Point. And for those who don't know that his name, real name was Hiram, tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, he did not want to be a, so- a soldier. He had no interest in in doing it. And his father said he'd arranged a place at West Point, which is really prestigious for, you know, his father was a leather tanner and um, it, it would be a big deal for him to go. And his father says, you're going. He says, I don't want to go. And the protests were short lived. His father made him go. So he chose up there. And when he arrives, he saw that his name had been recorded wrong. He explained uh, to the registrar at West Point that his name was not Ulysses S. Grant. It was Hiram Ulysses Grant. And he was told that admission could only be given in the recorded name. So he became Ulysses S. Grant from then on. The S didn't stand for anything, but he, his dad wanted him at West Point, And so he became Ulysses S. Grant. And he did well at West Point, graduated 21st in his class. He had major impact in his career and even had ties with Abraham Lincoln, appointing him to to do important tasks. How important was his leadership in that time? I mean, he was seen as a uh, a real leader, quiet but forceful, kind of patient. He doesn't start off great, but he has... Um, great horsemanship and he proves to be a great soldier. He fought in the Mexican American war um, and had some great teachers in Zachary Taylor and Winfield Scott, but um, he goes through a tough time and uh, drinks a lot out in the Northwest territory. He leaves the army because he's busted being drunk uh, and goes into kind of a spiral and, um, and he ends up selling firewood in Galena, Illinois to make ends meet Three years from that point, he becomes the general in, in charge of all Union armies. And, you know, he's he's humble, but he's also unshakable. And Lincoln really values his ability uh, to get forces to do what he wants and to really fight. And uh, Grant is seen as the leader who makes that happen. One quick story. Grant's, you know, at the time of the war, Lincoln requests his presence in Washington so he could be sworn in as commander of all Union armies. And he arrives at the Willard Hotel with his oldest son, Fred. And Grant doesn't dress well. He's in this shabby old uniform and muddy boots. And not knowing who he was, the clerk said, all rooms are booked. Uh, sorry, we don't have a space for you, uh, except for this tiny space on the top floor. And Grant, you know, said, that's fine. He said, that's that's fine. I'll take that. So he signs the register and the clerk looks down and it reads U.S. Grant and son, Galena, Illinois. And the clerk is horrified. He calls the manager and moments later, they're escorted up to the bridal suite and the lavish accommodations. But point being is he was humble even in his um, stardom. He was our president. He was the 18th U.S. president. And something major happened in that year that you wrote about in your book, the mm-hmm. 1876. That was yeah. a big event. It was. You know, Grant's eight-year presidency, we don't talk about a lot, but his his whole important role was to win the peace after the Civil War, and in particular, make the process of, of reconstruction in the South successful. So he does everything possible. He sends federal troops to go after the KKK in the South. Uh, he pushes for the 14th and 15th Amendment, uh, citizenship and the right to vote uh, for blacks, um, African-Americans serving Congress, U.S. Senate, um, the farming, uh, owning farms. So things are changing uh, in Lincoln's vision. and uh, But the Confederacy and the vestiges of the Civil War are still in the South. And um, 
Johnson, Andrew Johnson, rolled back some of Lincoln's successes and Grant's trying to reestablish. And then the 1876 election happens and it's contested and Grant's on his way out. But he makes this grand bargain uh, to keep the Union together, to pull federal troops out of the South uh, and to have a pledge of no slavery, rights of blacks and the South stays in the Union. Uh, Rutherford B. Hayes becomes president and he holds the Union together in a time when Grant thought that we could be tilting back to Civil War Part Two, And there's also a fun fact, Lacey, as Grant presidency, they also formed DOJ, a.k.a. United States Department of Justice. That was in mm-hmm. 1870. How important are these facts and stories of history important for people to read today? I think they're really important just to know where we've been, right? Um, I've... I was finishing this book as I was anchoring the January 6th you know, mob on Capitol Hill and the violence that was unfolding there. Um, and so I'm writing about 1876 and I'm seeing real time this dispute, really the most serious we've experienced since 1876. And I think what, what happened was it, it gave me two moments in history and it gave me great perspective in that we are divided as a country. We are very split, uh, but we have been there before. And at that time we were tilting back towards civil war. And my, my takeaway from this whole thing is that to keep our Republic really requires constant vigilance. You know, our freedoms aren't automatically given and we've got to keep on digging and keep on pursuing them every election. Once again, too honored talking to Brett Baird, talking about his new book, To Rescue the Republic, Ulysses S. Grant, The Fragile Union and the Crisis of 1876. True honor talking to you today, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the time.